Hey guys, today let's look at Guardians of the Rift, a beginner's guide. I will be linking a more advanced guide and also a solo guide, so stay tuned for those. But I want to keep this guide simple because when you first start the uh, Guardians of the Rift, it gets very confusing and you just want to know what you need to do. So I'm going to just do one full run and walk you through it. Keep in mind, this run is not the most efficient, it just goes through how the game works. So in the very beginning, you want to activate a barrier and preferably one that's not activated already. Reason being is, look at the upper left hand corner of your screen now. Do you see how you have 17 points in both the catalyst and the elemental uh, points there already? And make sure you find a barrier that hasn't been activated because you will get 2 points instead of 17. So, this is also a good time now to talk about how to win this game and what the uh, points mean. So if you look at the upper left hand corner again, you'll see there's a bar that's yellow. If that bar reaches 100, you win and the game is over. And for every 100 points in the catalyst and the elemental uh, point section, you get one reward pool outside of the game room. So what that means is if you finish a game and you only have 300 points in both catalyst and elemental, you get three pools but if you get more than like let's say you get 400 and 200 well those points do stick so the next game you want you might want to get 200 and 400 to balance it out so how do we get these points well the fragments i'm mining currently can be converted into essence which each is worth two energy points now if i were to do a combination that would be three but we're not going to talk about that and the other way to gain points is either creating a barrier which i showed earlier or creating a guardian but there's only a limited amount of guardians that can be created per game so as a beginner i would recommend just creating barriers uh, and strengthening them because you can get a lot of points as you can see here if you have a overcharged cell and you just strengthen a barrier that's 15 points in each in my more advanced guides, I will tell you when and how to use these. And let's now go back to the game because we want to figure out how to actually play. So back to the mining and we're going to mine until 40 seconds and then we're going to leave this area. The reason being is that it takes about 40 seconds to craft a full inventory and pouches full of guardian essences from the guardian fragments. What we were mining were called the Guardian Fragments, and if you don't have 56 agility, you can mine it outside as well, in those smaller rocks. But once you have enough Guardian Essence Fragments, you come to this table, and you make the fragments into the Guardian Essence, which are these round objects that are essentially Rune Essence. You can think of them as Rune Essence, and the point of the game is you're going to go to the actual Rune Altars around the world, and turn the Essences into Stones and Runes which are then worth two points each, the stones are. This is a good time also to talk about the decision choices you make in this mini game. So, this image you'll see a lot, especially in the advanced guide, but essentially it tells you what you should be doing at any given moment. And at the very top is the portal. The portal takes you to a mine that actually mines essences instead of fragments. This is the most efficient way to gain points because you do not need to go to the table to turn the fragments because you are directly mining essences. And there are obviously other things on this image, but we're not going to go through them in detail right now. Uh, follow the advanced guide for that. We're just going to go back to the game because uh, let's just take a look at what the real gameplay looks like. Okay, back we go. The game has just started, and if you look at the upper left, you'll see water and mine altars are active. We go to the mine altar, which takes us to real mine altar, and we make a whole bunch of mine runes and the catalyst stones. Uh, because the catalyst is not elemental. So, so elemental is fire, earth, water, air, and everything else is catalyst. After we make these 40-ish stones, we go back to the guardian. We deposit the stones to the guardian, uh, giving us about... Uh, 80 to 90 points in the catalyst and immediately the portal shows up. Uh, we, I'll talk about this in more later but you can predict when the portal shows up and as we come to the portal we now mine 4 to 6 um, room as well. I'll start calling them room as essences and the reason I'm mining 4 to 6 is because the Varrock armor I'm wearing has a chance to give me an extra war and 
the celestial ring I'm wearing also has a chance to give me an extra war. So I'm mining a whole bunch of these really fast and I'm putting them putting them in my bags for the next one. Okay, now that I have a full inventory, let's look at the game. Now it's Earth and Blood, and Earth is a strong altar, and Blood is a super strong altar. Overcharge. So I'm gonna pick Earth because I can't access the Blood right now. But by making these uh, Earth uh, stones, I also get a strong Earth cell. It's it's the green cell uh, in my inventory, and I can use that to make a Guardian or strengthen a shield. So I chose to make a Guardian because I because there, there was an empty spot for it. But if, if there were 10 Guardians out of 10, you would just go make a shield. Um, and once that's done, back to crafting UNS from the fragments. Yeah, so basically, remember that chart I showed you earlier? Every 30 seconds, something is gonna change. And you're gonna have to decide whether you want to go mine more fragments, make more essence, turn in some cells, make a guardian, make a shield. It's a lot of decisions and in the beginning it can be very hectic. That's why the advanced guide will help you out with that. For now though, as a beginner, all you want to do is keep crafting essence and going to whatever altar is active and turning those essence into stones so you can get points. And this is a good example of a decision you have to make. In this round, you have Water and Chaos, both of which actually suck. Uh, they're both what's called medium cells, which don't give a lot of points for the actual cell. So what did I do? I actually just waited out. You see that? Because I really wanted a strong or overcharge. And Nature is a strong, whereas Air Room is weak. So I chose the Nature immediately in that round, so now I can make another strong cell, which gives me a lot of points when I use it to make either a barrier or a portal. Again, if you're new, you don't need to wait, just go to whatever is active. I was, waited. I was waiting here because the timer was running down towards the end, and also because I've already played a lot of games, um, so I know what I needed to do. And here you can see there is a death and a water, but unfortunately I ran out of essences, and in my advanced guide I will show you how to avoid a situation like this. But it's okay, another portal has shown up, to the portal we go. And yeah, it's just a cycle of mining essence, crafting essence, and then going to the portal to mine uh, more essence, and just waiting until the energy reaches a re reaches a hundred. Talking about energy, the energy will go down if the abyssal creatures starting start attacking the main guardian, and they can attack the main guardian when the shields are down. So this is a situation that you will see happening quite often as well. Everybody is so focused on crafting essences and turning and like making guardians that they forget to uh, put the shields up or strengthen them. And the abyssal creatures actually can't end up killing the guardian in the very beginning of the game, wasting a lot of time because there's a two minute timer at the beginning, remember, when you were, when you were mining those fragments. So do be careful with that. If you find a world like that, I would just hop uh, as, a, as a beginner uh, in the later Games, I can show you how that can actually be a benefit and in a solo game that's actually a very good way to rack up a lot of points but those are for a topic for another day at this point let's speed it up because we are we've talked about the core gameplay which is make essences here and uh, once you make essences go to any altar that is active turn the essence into stones which are worth points Points can also be gotten by creating barriers or creating guardians. But because guardians uh, have a limited amount that can be active at any moment in time, you should probably just go create barriers. And also, each altar is different. Because some altars are strong and overcharged, others are weak or medium, you probably want to go for the stronger ones because those cells are worth a lot more points. And when a portal opens, definitely stop what you're doing and go to the portal because that is the fastest way you'll get more essences as you can mine directly from it and you get 4 to 6 per mining action, which will give you more points. And here we are, at towards the end of the game. The Guardian's hit point is almost to 100 now. We're trying to get in our last little bit of room crafting done. Uh, once the Guardian hits 100, you do have extra time about 10 seconds to turn in any stones and use up any cell. So no rush. And also, at the beginning of every game, you should grab 10 on power cells and 1 weak cell so you can set up for the next run. And if your pouch broke, you can use Lunars to repair it 
If you don't have lunars, there are ways to repair, such as the lantern, but that's also something for the advanced guide. Okay, after some hard work, we have some pools, and we come here to uh, see what we get. Now, if you're looking for the outfit, you need abyssal pearls, uh, which are these pink pearls uh, in my inventory, and you need a lot of them uh, to buy the full outfit. But when you're pulling, you really want to be looking for the lantern, which is the rarest drop, 1 in 700. And also the needle, which is used to make to turn all four pouches into a colossal pouch. But that requires 85 more crafting. I'm assuming most people don't have that right now, but they will once they play this, this mini. And that officially concludes the beginner's guide. I hope you guys learned something and can now play the mini game and have fun with it. Uh, I'm, I'm currently making the advance and the solo guide, and I'm having fun. Lastly guys, if you enjoyed this video and learned something and liked it, please hit the subscribe button coming up or the, bu or the red button under the video. It really helps grow my channel and it motivates me so much to know that the content I'm making is helping everyone. And post a comment too, I will reply to every single one of them. Have a good day, bye!